what is a zero-sum game in game theory? And this is actually a classic game, and I'm going through the classic game setups, so let's go over it. There are going to be two traits to a zero-sum game. One is that one player's gain is another player's loss. And the other trait is that the net payoff in every box is zero. Now classic scenario here is a football game where there can only be win one winner and one loser, where one team scoring points puts the other team down by that many of points. Um, but there's other scenarios like with charity where you have donors who are going to give a certain amount of money and they're trying to decide which uh, which people get that money, will um, one person getting more money toward their charity, that of course means that everybody else loses money from what they could have gotten, so that's also zero sum. Elections, of course, are zero sum because there's a winner and a loser, and any gains that one group makes is putting the other group behind by that amount, so there's sort of a net amount of stuff to be had, and one group getting it means the other group doesn't. Now, um, with, with soccer here, I've done left and right, so you can have, if you're going to kick at the goal, do you kick left or kick right? And does the goalie anticipate left and anticipate right? And then we're assuming, of course, that if it's opposite, then the person kicking the ball is going to score. If they go in the same direction, the ball will be blocked. That's classic setup. But of course, let's solve for Nash equilibrium. And we notice with zero-sum games that there is no pure strategies Nash equilibrium. Now, there will be mixed strategies, like in this case, you're going to want to mix 50% of the time you go right, 50% of the time you go left, and that's actually what happens in the real world when, um, when soccer goalies choose to anticipate right and left. So you can map this onto the real world quite a bit, but there's no pure strategies, Nash equilibrium. Now, one interesting thing that I'd like to point out is um, can you just add the same number to all of these and still get a zero-sum game. And I think there's an argument for that and an argument against that. So I'm going to test this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add two to every single payoff in this table. And we'll see if the Nash equilibrium changes. And hint, okay, it, it's never going to change. If you add the same number to everything in the table, the Nash equilibrium will never change. The question is, does that change the actual game? I added two and the outcome did not change. We still have no pure strategies Nash equilibrium. And yet I think it is still kind of true that one player's gain here is another player's loss. And yet we don't have a net payoff of zero in each box. So I think what makes this weird is if you think about say the charity example where say two players are competing for the money of a certain donor. Um, it's not a negative payoff. It, the payoffs will not add up to zero. They'll add up to w one player getting a positive amount and the other player getting zero. Um, so that wouldn't necessarily technically ca be categorized in this way as meeting the second criteria. But people do consider that a zero-sum game. I would consider that a zero-sum game. So in some ways, if you could potentially frame something as negative one, one, or negative five, uh, positive five, then I think it, it counts as zero-sum, even if you happen to rejigger the payoffs such that you've just added two to every, every number there. Now let me look at one other scenario. So I'm going to set up a different game here and see if you think this is zero-sum. Is this a zero-sum game? And yes, I would argue that this is because every single box does add up to zero. There's a net payoff of zero in each box. It definitely meets criteria number two. It also meets criteria number one. Each player's gain is the other's loss. So I just want to point out that the payoffs in any one given box do not have to be the same across all boxes in the table. You can have different payoffs as long as they kind of counterbalance each other. And that's, that's the basic structure of a zero-sum game.